Now, look, I watch a lot of horror movies, but I would never actually want to be in one in a real life situation. Think about Ghostface and think about how scary Ghostface actually is. Scenario, you're running around getting chased by Ghostface. You don't know who it is. They're like six feet tall, chasing you around, trying to give you a little poke poke with his knife. It's the third act. You got him down for the count. You pull off the mask and it's your three foot seven cousin that's never been mentioned before in the history of your life. Do you get where I'm going with this? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nick, and if you're new here, welcome. If you are not new here, welcome back. So today we are getting into the 2011 film Scream 4. I did my commentaries for the first three movies, as everybody should know, Scream 5, and yes, we're calling it Scream 5 because what they want us to call it is, it's not cute. Scream 5 comes out in January, so I thought it would be fun to do a commentary slash reaction to each of the films in the franchise for each month leading up to the release. So feel free to go and watch my reactions for Scream 1 through 3, and today we will get into part 4. Now, just like with all the other ones, I have seen this movie a gajillion, bajillion, million f***ing times. If you have watched my previous three reactions, you'll probably be able to pick up that Scream 4 is is my least favorite entry in the franchise. Before we even move forward, I need to correct something because people don't seem to grasp this. Simply because Scream 4 is my least favorite does not mean that I do not like Scream 4. I love all four Scream films. So my first time seeing Scream 4 was kind of a shitty experience. Prior to that movie getting released, they did this big auction online where they were, you know, they had props and, and costumes and stuff from the movies. So I go to, you know, to see if there was something that my poor ass could afford. There wasn't. And they had all props and costumes. And we're talking like, like the bloodied up death costumes from all of the characters with all of the characters tag names the names of the scenes everything was on that auction so the entire movie was basically spoiled and then i go into the movie and you know people were like you know based on the trailer there's this one little tiny clip in the trailer that kind of leads me to believe that emma roberts might be the killer there's no way that emma roberts is gonna be the killer emma roberts is like three feet tall i'm like it's not gonna be, there's no way it's not realistic but then i thought to myself even if emma roberts was the killer there's usually two killers. So I thought back to Scream 2 and I was like, well, we know that Mrs. Loomis was, you know, tiny in stature. You know, she she killed Randy and, you know, it kind of makes sense that she didn't realize it was her because it was inside of a news van so you couldn't see her standing up. So, you know, it's fine if Emma Roberts is in on it because there's undoubtedly going to be another killer. Enter Rory Culkin. I do like this movie. I like it a lot. It's just, you know. Now, before we get into our popcorn and attempt to watch this movie through the horrendous booger that's been smeared across the lens, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification button so that you can get notifications for when I upload a new video. Also, feel free to check me out on social media, should you so please. And yeah, let's get into it. Scream 4. Does she still make stuff? I haven't seen her since the 90210 remake. But she don't give a shit who dies because there's no character development. There's just body parts ripping and blood spewing. She's got a point. The first saw, that's my jam. The rest of them, oof. I had that phone. The T-Mobile sidekick, I had like four different sidekicks. That phone was the shit. Mm, of course I don't. Eat me. You hang up on me and I'll cut through your neck until I feel bone. I mean, I, I understand that this is like stab 37, but Ghostface was angry as shit in this movie. Are the doors locked? Don't freak out. I'm not a fan of this opening, referring to the movie within a movie within a movie thing, uh, purely because you spend so little time with each of these characters that it does not allow you to actually build any sort of emotional connection. There's just not enough time, which is a big thing in this movie, for me at least. I, I feel like a lot of serious moments get undercut by comedic aspects. But I will say, with Lucy Hale and Renee, I, what is her name? Two hours later. The 90210 girl. I would have preferred these two girls to just be the entire opening. Have this entire scene just fleshed out and expanded upon, I would have been down for that. I'm not outside. I'm right beside you. 
I was shook. But then I saw this nonsense. And I was like, why is there that much blood? But then this happened and I, I got it. Fucking kidding me. What? Both of them. Both of them. Mm. Fabulous. Miss Sookie Stackhouse. Veronica Mars over here. Why? Because you talk too much. <laughs> now shut the fuck up and watch the movie. You know, we have all been there at some point. Maybe not the murder part. People who talk during movies, which I understand the irony of what's happening right now, but like if I go to a movie theater and you're talking, don't talk in the movie theater. I did not pay to listen to your voice box work. There's a reason I don't watch these movies. I can't believe you haven't seen them. We live in Woodsboro. It has nothing to do with Woodsboro. Yeah, see, I could have completely done without the whole Jenny and Marnie stuff. I don't know if it's so much the dialogue, but it's, it's I don't know, it's the delivery of it. They're not overly convincing to me. This is the last person you're ever gonna see alive. What? If you haven't seen the original opening with these two girls, while I'm not a fan of the movie within a movie opening, they, if they would have used the original that they had with them, that would have at least flowed better. Think of me as your director. You're in my movie. You got a fun part, so don't blow it. What movie? Same one Marnie's in. I love Roger L. Jackson. <laughs> I know you like scary movies because Kevin told me you do. Kevin got this for your birthday. Isn't that nice? Kevin says you're turning 30. Well, that can be kind of scary. <laughs> I have a 4.0 GPA and 135 IQ, asshole. What did you do with Marnie? It's rough. <laughs> The door that she was just standing in front of, listening with her ear up against the door, literally had a lock and deadbolt on the door. I also remember sitting in the theater like, where the hell is she? What is this weird construction site that she suddenly just like ran into? And I found the actual location of where they filmed this, um, which coincidentally is actually across the street from Kirby's house. But yeah, it's like that the house has this second story thing that leads to the garage, which is kind of cool. I don't know why it's bare bones, but. <laughs> now that this title card and the song, the bee's knees, man. I love this song. The sounds, I discovered them because of this movie. Listen to them. Specifically this album for this song, Something to Die For. Ah! That filter is horrendous. Not her though. She's fabulous. It's good. Told the owner I'd kill his cat if he didn't get it right. Sydney Prescott, who never wanted to be in the spotlight. Look, I've, I've heard all the excuses. Oh, she's trying to like take back her, her image. The Sydney Prescott from the first three movies wouldn't give two f**ks about her image. She didn't, want, she didn't want him to do interviews. She didn't want to be in the press. And now suddenly she's out here writing books. And not only is she writing a book, but she's going to go on a book tour and knowingly go to her hometown where the first murders took place on the anniversary of the murders. I mean, I love Hayden Panettiere. Your cousin. Last stop on her book tour, first stop on her road to a new life. It's very dramatic. I like her hair here too. I've heard a couple people say that they don't like her hair in this movie. But I think it's pretty flattering on her. What? Wait, watch out! And this is not a drag on the, that jump scare, but I genuinely, to this day, still feel like that is the most effective scare in this movie. Now, while I am ready for Dewey to get the ax in Scream 5. I'd just like the celebrations begun. High school. <sighs> Dewey is a snack in this movie. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I made some lemon squares in my car. This one, she needs to go and scream five too. They need to take her out as, as soon as possible. Not even the opening scene, take her ass out during the trailers. Now, if I was a victim for 
too long. It was up to me to reinvent myself. That's why I wrote this book. Sydney Prescott, everybody. Now, I cannot remember the name of this TV host, reporter, lady. I think she was in two, three, and four. I doubt she'll be in five, but that would be a kind of cool little thread if they also somehow figured out a way to include her in Scream 5. Here is my Whisper Massacre anniversary question. What is your favorite scary movie? I've always wondered, like, this whole thing that he has attached to his head, live streaming 24-7. Did that even exist? Also, how would that, like, if you're actively live streaming to the internet, how would the battery last? Gail looking snatched as usual. A new role that would be my own. Ugh, the, the filter, the filter. I want to read that book though. I need you all to stay where you are and remain silent. Nobody leaves yet. The sheriff thanks you. Can just wait, Barney Fife. I'm running an event here. Now I do like that was a pretty good callback to Scream Two because Gail wrote referred to like I uh, said Dewey's Barney Fifeish presence in her in the uh, the book The Woodsboro Murder. So I th I do like that. That was a good callback. Sheriff, bring it out here. There. It's apparently a loud ass f***ing cell phone to be able to be heard from within a building while within a trunk. Sure, Jan. Somebody want to share? Jenny Randall and Marnie Cooper were murdered last night. So one thing I also liked is that when all of, when everybody's phone is ringing, even those that don't like have phones, like are like turned and look looking around, whereas Jill is just sitting there literally with this face. I'm not that innocent. I see you, bitch. She wants to be a part of the investigation, Sheriff. Are you familiar with the phrase, I wrote the book on this? See, all that was missing was a punch. We get a punch in every film. She should have socked Judy right in the tooth. Don't treat me like I'm the media. I helped solve these things three times, remember? You and me, together. Well, not really. I feel like I wish that this whole, whatever conflict that they were having was a little bit more developed because I really don't understand why Dewey is being a dick. So you'll have a 24 hour police surveillance. That's comforting. They better ramp up the police presence in Scream 5 because they're next to useless in these movies. I was like lame PR me right now. Well, fuck me wow. Best idea ever. Gail should have punched her ass too. Well, it's Gail Riley now. You gave it all up for love, I know that. How long have you and Dewey been married? Ten years. Oh, just like your characters in Stab 3. Wow. Wow. I didn't mean bad wow. It just, it always seemed like more of a movie romance than a real one because it was a movie. And in real life, you two'd never be. Yep, she should have clocked her right there. <laughs> her mom was my sister. I have scars too. No one ever asked me about my scars. She means knife scars, mom. Where was this side of the family in the other films, especially the first one? Because like, why would Sydney be at the Riley residence after she was attacked and they couldn't find her dad instead of being sent to stay with her aunt? Gotta get going. That interaction always, like the look that they just gave each other. That's suspicious. That's weird. I always got a little, a little weird flirtatiousness there. I mean, I would flirt with him too, cause, whoo, damn! Uh, Get a warm and surprise. It's okay. Relax, relax. It's just me. <laughs> I have seen this movie so many times, and I completely forgot about that. I guess I just ate my words about that effective jump scare, huh? Oh, sorry, I didn't. No, he's just leaving. It's, it's my ex. I would have went right downstairs if I was Sydney and been like, I don't think your uh, police force is very effective considering this boy literally just climbed in the f***ing window. What? Nothing, you just, uh, you remind me of, uh, me. Jill just got a huge boner over that one. Sorry about that. Just making my rounds before taking off. You don't remember me, do you? I can't fucking see you. We were in Peter Pan together. I played a lost boy. You were Tiger Lily. I do like that, like she's referencing that when they were in school together, that they were in a play together, which links up well with Sydney being uh, a drama major in college.
It's Olivia Morris. She lives next door. Seth Cohen. Oh, I get it. I'm, I'm just here for the comic relief. I love Adam Brody. I'm going to have to get physical. I mean it. This is it. I'm going to just fuck off. God, I haven't seen Shaun of the Dead probably since it first came out. You want to come up? Angel of Death leave? Oh, she's in the guest room. Forget it. Next door's close enough. Now, what would have happened if she was like, yeah, sure, I'll come up? No, it doesn't matter to me anyways. My mom doesn't let me go. It's Trevor. I'll handle this. Back when people still had, you know, ringtones. I can barely hear you, Trevor. This isn't Trevor. Oh, oh, all right. Well, then why do you have his phone? Whoever this is. Now I do actually quite like this scene. This is probably this is one of the highlights of the movie for me. I wish they would have figured out a way for when she opens the closet and he's not there to make it less obvious for the audience to know that he was in Olivia's closet. I never said I was in your closet. I love that. No! Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Ooh, he f her up. I will say that the, well, more so for this scene, the ramped up brutality was a welcome thing after Scream 3. Am I allowed to show that on YouTube? Damn, he used her like a paintbrush to decorate that room. Why don't you come for me? You got the balls for that? Oh, poor Sydney. You think this is all about you? You think you're still the star? This isn't a fucking movie! It will be. I love this right here. I've got plans for you. I'm gonna slit your eyelids in half so you don't blink when I stab you in the face. <laughs> Whoa. Do not look, okay? She said you were the angel of death. <laughs> scrap, scrap, scrap. <laughs> You know Sydney's like a third degree black belt by this point. Whoopin'. Amazing, amazing. I think I cheered in the theater when that happened. I saw him going to that yard two houses down right before. Yeah, and I circled around to cut him off. And I met Haas coming from the other direction. Yeah, no, he must have circled back around somehow. He's like a ghost. See, that part drives me insane. That is such a massive plot hole because Jill was in her own bedroom and Charlie was already in the closet by the time that Olivia entered the house because they watched her enter the house. So who the hell did they see down the street? Are you recording with that thing? Live video blog upload. He's webcasting right now. Mind turning it off for a little old school off the record? Can't. Owe it to my audience. Turn that fucking thing off. She's fabulous. <laughs> Two generations of cutting edge journalists intertwining our passions for media. What would you say? I love you. See, I'm Robbie, only actually gay. That'd be a big deal for Cinema Club. A visit from Sydney Prescott, I mean, she's the star. Yes, she's Daniel Radcliffe to my J.K. Rowling. Well, without the book sales in the box office. <laughs> I'll give him that, he dragged the shit out of her there. <laughs> There's no broken bones. I think it'd be fine, I would just take a couple weeks off. Fun fact, that's supposed in the script. I don't think they ever filmed the scene, but in the original script, that doctor is supposed to be Stephen Orth's brother, the technically the first guy that got killed in the original movie, the boyfriend that was uh, tied to the chair. I know you care about your readers, all those little downtrodden fucks that just need a light at the end of their tunnel so they don't jump off a bridge. How did Sydney not, like, she, was she not perceptive enough that she didn't realize that the, this chick is a major snake? I won't be needing you anymore. Sydney, you're fired. 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 Hmm. The only other thing that I've seen, I think Alison Brie, I believe. The only other thing that I've seen her in was a movie relatively recently called the Rental? I think that one kind of got mixed reviews. I enjoyed it, but she was pretty good in that movie. It was very different than this character, though. She'll come around. I don't like this death scene, but I do like this phone call. This is Rebecca. Sydney Prescott, please. I'm handling Miss Prescott's calls and appearances. May I take a message? You are the message. Ooh, love that. Chills. <laughs> No. 
I do like that she was like, nope, <laughs> just threw the phone down. Although the police probably would have been a good thing to call. I, I've never quite understood exactly how, despite the fact that there's an entire press conference going on directly outside of the garage, nobody hears this. This movie, for me, like, I understand Scream 3 had more comedy, but Scream 3, in my opinion, better balanced the change in tone. Whereas this one, it just, it never seems to effectively balance the humor with the serious tone of the movie. And, like, the, the handle coming off just seems so cartoony. Like, it could have just been locked. I'm about to beat this bitch up. She hit that car like, and Maggie hit that car. Okay, Cinema Club, we are now in session. Welcome. I'll tell you a little bit about ourselves. We are a sanctioned after-school activity. Yeah, the first clue should have been walking into Cinema Club and only seeing horror movie posters. That's all there are now are remakes. Only horror in the studio's green light. There are still rules, but the rules have changed. The unexpected is the new cliche. Yeah. Aside from that little snippet of Kirby showing Sydney the live feed, I really wish that we would have actually seen that other people, like did anybody actually watch his live stream? Because it feels like it's just set up as a red herring because we know that the killer is filming the murders. And the school's hot chick savaged beyond recognition. We all know where it goes from there. A party. Exactly, a party. Guaranteed third act main cast bloodbath. Also these rules of a horror remake that don't exist. You know, it's kind of an underground thing. Email invites, pretty secret. But you're not gonna tell me? We're working together. By Scream 5, Sid, Dewey, and Gail, they need to like just walk around with a giant bag of like those little tile things so that you can track things and just everybody that they interact with just plop one on their car. Or just like take all of the suspects and lock them in ind individual rooms like one by one. And if somebody doesn't die, well, guess what? That's probably a clue. You probably figured out your killer. I'm so sorry about Olivia. I'm sorry about your publicist. I'm not. How do you handle it? People staring at you all the time. I could never handle that kind of attention. I just feel like it would take over your whole life. Oh, she is as fake as press on nails. What I do is I try not to think about me. I have people I care about. I focus on them. And the rest, it, um, it works out. One of the things that I really like in, in movies is attention to detail with costuming. The similarities between their outfits and Sydney and Billy in the first film. Because Billy was wearing a like a blue and gray flannel and Sydney was wearing the, the like the blue jean jacket. I mean, if you look at their outfits in this scene, knowing what we all know, I like that attention to detail a lot. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, the Stabathon looks lit. Like if they, they, they need to do that now without the murders and stuff, you know, obviously. I remember a couple years ago for Halloween, I recreated uh, Casey Becker's dead body, like a skeleton version for a Halloween party I did. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping. Oh, it was wonderful, it was wonderful. You know what they need to do? I don't know if, I don't think they did it already. They need to do a Scream Hollywood Horror Nights. Is it Hollywood Horror Night? You know, the thing that they have at Universal? They need to do a Scream one, if they haven't already done it. Did they already do it? <laughs> She's not even trying to be sly. Now apparently for Scream 5, Heather Graham, her stuff that she did for Stab, Using it again in Scream 5 because they contacted her and asked permission to use it again. So that's exciting. So who is this supposed to be that attacks her? I'm assuming Charlie, right? Well, no, maybe. So is this supposed to be Charlie that attacks Gail? Can't be Jill that attacks Kate and kills the officers because then Jill is... So I am Confucian. Oh, I like this shot of her face right now when she has like the realization right here. Oh, oh, I love that shot. Go ahead if you have the guts. If you know, you know. Who's watching me? A webcam? He's recording the murders. What? 
I'm like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm distracted. He, look, he's sweaty. Ooh. Ooh. I'll be right back. I know this one. You're not supposed to say that, are you? Eh, new decade, new rules. You know, these days, you might come back. I need that. I could have used more Adam Brody. I recently started watching The O.C. I've never seen it before because I am a One Tree Hill stan. I hadn't really seen Adam Brody in a whole lot of stuff prior to that other than this. And then he was also in Ready or Not. God, here we go. Fuck Bruce Willis. Quite possibly one of the worst lines, not just in the history of this franchise, but in in film. I'm just gonna, I'm, that's how much I hate that line. Incredibly fucking stupid line, completely undermined the death sequence that just happened. Let me contain myself, because that just, ugh, I get heated every time. Also, how did nobody see that? Like, think about it, like, a murder just happened. You're, you're, you're one of those surrounding neighbors. A murder just happened across the street. If you hadn't gotten the fuck out of town, which is what you should have done. You know, I would have been like this at the window. That's suspicious. Let's get out of here. Homegirl has clearly never seen a death scene before because the facial expressions she's making. The, the nail slot is fine. I think that's fine. But the, the actual dying? It was really bad. Oh, honey. <sighs> all right, all right. I'll stop talking shit about the movie. I'll stop talking shit about the movie. Until the next scene. You're gonna be fine. All right? I swear. No more on your own. It's you and me. Forever. Mm. Say that to me. I could trivia your ass under the table, cinema boy. Oh, yeah? Who played Leatherface first? Gunnar Hansen. May I ask what the hell you're doing here? Didn't I find the after party? No, you found the anti party and it's invitation only. Look, he just rolled up into her house, uninvited, and put his shoes on her furniture. So which one of you guys sent me a text message from Jill's phone, huh? Isn't your phone missing? Kirby looks snatched. This this, this final outfit, like the, the hair, the, the shoulder pads, the blaze, oh. Now tonight, there is a good chance that Charlie Walker may get lucky with a girl. I feel like saying may get lucky with a girl. The most high school thing that any of these high school kids have said. Hello, who's there? You should never say who's there. Don't you watch scary movies? It's a death wish. Might as well just come out here and investigate a strange noise or something. Did I just interrupt something right here? <laughs> the look on her face. Who invited you, Trevor? <laughs> Get out of my house! Back in the day around this time when they were talking about potentially at some point doing a Buffy reboot or, you know, a show set within that universe, I would be down for Hayden Panettiere as a Slayer. Or I would have been down for Hayden Panettiere as, like, the new lead had they developed her character a little bit more, of course. Hayden Panettiere, if you've watched Heroes, she has the, the acting range. And that's what you need for the lead, the final girl. You need range. You can't, you can't, there's rules. I, I, I'm gay, I'm gay. I mean, if it helps. And yet another completely obnoxious, stupid ass line of dialogue said during a death scene. Don't mix humor and one-liners into the death scenes. If you're gonna have humor in the movie, don't have it in the same places that you're having horrifying situations. All it does is undermine the scene. I wish we would have gotten like an actual, actual chase scene. Like I know that technically like he chased them up the stairs. I just, Scream always has good chase scenes. Oh, look at that filter. Look at that filter. Oh, that's greasy. That's really fucking greasy. Yeah, that's greasy. Greasy. Halloween, uh, Texas Chainsaw, Dawn of the Dead. It's one of those, right? Right? Got it right. I was fucking right. Yep, I would have liked to see her as the like the lead in new movies had we not gotten the ending that we got for this one. I want Charlie. And yes, I know. Kirby's alive. Wes wanted her to be alive. She's dead. You ask Hayden Panettiere, would you come back for another one? If she says no, then guess what? Kirby is dead.
That blood always looked like CGI to me. Don't do that, filmmakers. Don't use CGI blood. You think anyone gets away? <laughs> Now look at her ass in that costume. Do you think anybody would have believed that? No! What the fuck are you talking about? I am not the girl you cheat on. Ugh. Ah! Ugh. That, uh, I would, that, ugh. That is wild that she did that to him. That was brutal as f I mean, all I ever heard was Sydney this and Sydney that and Sydney, Sydney, Sydney. You were always just so fucking special. The part of Jill's motive about wanting fame, very ahead of its time, very relevant to the way our culture is right now. I like that. However, oh lord. We already had a sadistic family member that nobody knew existed before. We already did some, you know, jealous of Sydney's fame, which again, like I get that we're talking about psychopaths here, but it's like Sydney quite clearly does not want to be famous. What? Well, I guess not in this movie with Miss Stephen King over here writing books and shit. You had your 15 minutes. Now I want mine! I mean, what am I supposed to do? Go to college, grad school, work? <laughs> I have like the disgust. Work? <laughs> How do you think people become famous anymore? You don't have to achieve anything. You just gotta have fucked up shit happen to you. Unfortunately, true. <laughs> Yeah, one thing that they do in this movie is when people are getting stabbed, like like they have like the sound of water rushing as the blood is coming out. And that they didn't have that in the other films. I don't know, it's just like weird and jarring. Now, I might talk some shit. This whole scene right here of her fucking herself up, iconic to the max. She's fucking crazy. <laughs> no. Yeah, her running into the into the picture is that that's it for me. <laughs> ah man. I mean, what the hell would she have done if the glass had like went into her spine? It would have been ballsy if they would have ended it here, like they had originally intended, but alas. Wine scenes. <laughs> if I ever write a book one day, I'd, I'd want her to write it with me. I like the contact that they put into her eye to give her eye like that broken blood vessel effect. That looks really cool. They're not sure yet. Still touch and go, but she's an ICU. They think Sydney just might make it. <laughs> the look on her face. She may not remember anything. Oh, in time. Let's get some rest now, okay? Mm, that man is fine. This is a problem with which I have had much experience. Maybe I could help him in a room in which there are no others. Or you can all watch. I don't give a shit. She thinks you guys should write a book together with your matching wounds. Why, she was stabbed in the shoulder? How did she know I was too? I do love that a lot. I like that a lot. I remember in theaters, I was like, how the hell are they going to figure out that it's Jill? Like, what's going to happen? So I did. Ugh, yes. Her <gasps> up, Sydney. Whoa, bam. Whoa, bam. Whoa, bam. And that's about it. Oh, the, 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 the scream that Sydney lets out. Ugh. How are those stitches? Emma Roberts must be on PCP or something with the way she is throwing Nev Campbell's ass around. Clear. Clear. Wouldn't that have killed her? <laughs> Keeping in theme with the other ones, I wish she would have got her in the head. All right, so that was Scream 4. Now look, I know I talked a lot of shit in that movie, but like I said in the beginning, I still love that movie. It is not my favorite, it is my least favorite of the franchise, but I still, in general, find it to be an enjoyable movie. It's just oftentimes not the most visually appealing. It's got a lot of underwritten characters, a lot of plot holes, and this film, for me, requires significantly more suspension of disbelief than the previous three. Well, well, I take that back because the voice changer in Scream 3 is... The, the one thing that I really think was 
majorly lacking in this film was the way that Sydney is written because she doesn't have a story arc at all in this film. Sydney from the beginning of the film until the to the end of the film, there's no difference. We learn everything that we need to know about Sydney as she's introduced in the beginning of the film. If you if you think back to the first three films, even with Scream 3, where she had less screen time than the first two, she starts the film in one emotional place and ends it in a different one. She does not do that here. Sydney is she has a decent amount of screen time, but they don't give her character anything to do. Dewey, Dewey should have died in Scream 2. He better die in Scream 5. But he was... Whew. In this movie? The mustache? Miss mm. Courtney Cox, great as always. Charlie is literally nothing of a character. Not only did they not even give Charlie a motive, which is one of like the most important things in these films, but he's just barely a character up until then. Olivia, I was glad that they, you know, kind of ramped up the gore a little bit as compared to, to three. And Hayden Panettiere, she delivered a great performance. Maybe didn't get to know as much about her character as I wanted. The movie has a great soundtrack. Soundtrack. Not score, soundtrack. But enough about my never ending love for Scream 4. Let me know what you guys thought about this movie down in the comments and we will reconvene for when Scream 5 inevitably comes out on video on demand or whatever you wanna call it. Just like the first four films, we will do a rewatch of that and share our thoughts. I will see you next time.